All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Top 10 Toys. This week, I am looking at the saga of Crystar, the Crystal Warrior. Uh, this is an oddball little toy line from back in the early 80s that I'm not sure a lot of people remember. Uh, it only had basically one run. I think there's 16 total pieces, uh, if you're not counting the early variants of uh, some of these things. But uh, so most of them are going to get covered by this Top 10 list. Now, this was released also by Remco, who I uh, kind of touched on last week with that Karate Kid stuff. But uh, this was released in late 1982, and it was followed up by a Marvel comic series uh, in 1983. Uh, that comic series only lasted about 11 issues. Had a couple of notable uh, appearances from uh, Marvel characters. I think Nightcrawler showed up for an issue. I think Doctor Strange. And then that last issue, 11, had an Alpha Flight appearance that you could see uh, there. But this comic series actually uh, had one notable issue, and that is issue eight that everybody is uh, out there hunting because of that uh, skull that you can see down there at the bottom. And that skull uh, became notable because uh, it was used by uh, Glenn Danzig in uh, the logos for his you know, band Danzig. And I think he also used it for Sam Hain as well. But uh, that is what makes a lot of people seek out this uh, Chris Star issue eight is because of the use of that skull uh, yeah, by Glenn Danzig. Pretty cool, you know, pretty cool little uh, tidbit and footnote uh, to have there. Again, this is not a very large to toy line. It's uh, basically these crystal good guys. You got molten lava bad guys and a few wizards mixed in. And uh, that was about the you know long and short of it. A couple of dragons and catapults here and there. And uh, that's really what we got. And number 10, we have here the uh, Crystal Warrior, the Magic of Crystal uh, little battle set. This was included with one of the wizards. Uh, I'm not. I'm probably gonna butcher the name, but I think it's Ogiode or Agiode. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but there was one included with this packet. Uh, the high sale. Of this one was sixty-five dollars, uh, and this one's coming in at number ten because while number nine is also sixty-five, this one actually had a couple of sales, so the average between the two uh, dropped it down a little bit because one of these, uh, I think, uh, sold for a bit less, so the average on the two sales was like fifty-five bucks. So uh, that's why this guy comes in at number ten. Uh, while number nine is also OGO'd in the package. But again, there were two sales of that, but both were at 65 bucks. So he ended up at number nine. I've given him the edge because of the two sales at 65 bucks as opposed to that uh, battle pack set that uh, had the one cheaper sale to drag that average down. So there's our nine and 10 picks are basically the same kind of figure, uh, different, different outfits for them. And uh, outside of that, you can see these uh, had some pretty crisp, cool crystal weapons and these uh, fun little... Uh, it was almost like you could look through a little eyepiece and, uh, you know, it would make things a little bit wonky, like a, almost like a kaleidoscope, a little bit uh, effect a bit. So that was a kind of fun toy to, you know, to mix it up back in the day. Now, rolling on to number eight. Number eight, we have the Lava Dragon. Now, this one was sold as loose but complete. This is our first hit with the bad guys. Uh, as you can see here, they're like little molten, you know, Molten rock guys. I mean, it's not the greatest sculpt there in that dragon. It looks like some sort of weird lizard, I guess. But, you know, they had a little uh, little rock guy, a little lava guy, you know, that could ride it with a little molten lava whip, I guess. Uh, I think the whole premise of this was, like, the good guys were order, the bad guys were chaos, and uh, I guess crystal and lava are opposites. I don't know. And I'm, I don't know exactly how the wizards mixed in. I don't really remember. We're talking about, uh, you know, 40 years ago at this point, uh, basically. So it's we're pretty close to it. So... My memory is very hazy. I did have most of these, but not all of them. But that loose and complete uh, Lava Dragon uh, sold for 75 bucks at a high. So that is why he rolled in at number eight, which will take us to number nine, which is another wizard figure here. And this is Zardeth. Uh, Zardeth had a high sale of uh, 80 bucks, but that one will seem to be outside the norm because the average on that one was actually only down to 40 bucks. But like I said, I was going with the high sale, so that one packaged high sale at 80 bucks is what uh, drove Zardeth to be our number seven selection. Uh, again, that one was sold new in package. You can see he had this little wizard robe, I guess. You can see he's a bad guy because he had the uh, you know the red crystal see-through thingy and his weird little mace because uh, you know he had to have a weapon of some kind. Which takes us to number six, and number six we're going to look at this. Uh, Crystal Warrior catapult set. This was an incomplete sale, so you can see it, it had a few of the things, had the figure and had the catapult, but uh, if you look on at the packaged case, you can see it was missing the net. 
And uh, the net is a piece that sells pretty well on its own, as well as it looks like the uh, the catapult balls might not have been included in that uh, that prior sale because I did not see them in the pictures. But uh, there were three catapult uh, balls uh, there that came with it as well. And those can also sell for a few bucks. Uh, so, again, this is one of those uh, weird toy lines where sometimes the individual pieces could be almost as much as the figures themselves. Uh, and that's yeah, not always the case, but... When the pieces are rare or odd, as they are in this case, it, you can see them uh, commanding a premium. So, that will take us to our top five. And rolling in at number five, we got another Crystal Warrior battle set. But uh, this time, the uh, battle set that features uh, the Warrior figure. It looks similar to that Catapult yeah, catapult figure, but this time it comes it looks like a little weapons case and a uh, little extra weapons and bits that you can put through. So this kind of the loose stuff that I'm talking about to find these loose little weapons and pieces. They could be, they could get a little pricey because the only way to find some of these things are in, in packages, cases like this. And uh, they're not always easily found because it, it's almost like an add on. This a warrior battle set. So this is not something that a lot of people would have picked up. But as you can see, there's a lot of little pieces that came with this thing. And this thing sold for 125 bucks uh, in the package. So, that's uh, not too shabby uh, for a, a figure like this. Because, again, this is not a well-known uh, uh, toy line as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the people I've talked to and asked, they don't re they vaguely remember it until I show them pictures and then it like kind of sparks in their heads. But, oh, yeah, I had one or two of those. It's like one of those oddball things you would get as a kid as a birthday present for uh, from a party. Like just random toys that people would give you. Just People didn't know, may not know you very well, and they just buy you a toy, and this was the stuff they could find on the shelves sometimes, some of this oddball stuff. And then you would get only one or two figures from this toy line because you got them as a gift from somebody you didn't you know, know all that well, like a classmate or whatever. I don't know, 80s, different time for all of us. Uh, so moving on, number four. Uh, number four is the other catapult set, uh, the crystal catapult set uh, for the good guys here. And this thing sold loose for 250 at a high, and I think that was at an auction. And it came with most of the pieces. You see a couple of the catapult, catapult balls. Actually, maybe it's been all three. Well, maybe it's just the two. But it sold loose with most of the pieces there, but as I said, for a little over 200 bucks. That's not too bad for, uh, again, a toy line such as this, which it is immediately followed by number three, which is the, the bad guys, the lava catapult, which, as you can see, is basically the same sort of model, just with some slight tweaks to make it more on the molten rock kind of side, you know, side for the bad guys. Uh, this one was also loose, but sold for $215.50, but this one looks like it came with all three of the catapult balls, whereas the other set might have only come with the two. So, again, not too bad. Uh, still loose, but over $200 uh, puts it in at number three, which is going to keep us rolling on here <clears throat> to our uh, number two pick, which is the hero of the... You know, the whole toy line here, which Chris Star, and this packaged figure, it's a high sale of uh, two hundred fifty dollars. That you can see boxed in there. He's got his sword. He's got the shield. He's got the cool helmet that comes off. Uh, you could take that helmet off, put it on your GI Joes, as I did when I was younger. And he's got again the little uh, seeing eye piece, the uh, little crystal that you could look through. And again, a still packaged figure is a, a tall order for a toy line again like this. So two hundred fifty bucks was the high sale for Chris Star there. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, as you might guess, the number one pick in this line is the base. That's, again, uh, those are usually the most expensive and not always the ones that are kept kept around. And this is the Crystal Castle that sold in here at number one. And this was a, yeah, a decent size uh, base, you know, as things go. Uh, you would say it's, I mean, these are smaller figures than, say, your uh, Masters of the Universe, but it's got a, kind of a similar setup as a... Uh, Castle Grayskull in the sense of it's two floors, uh, you got a front door, there's a lot of little bits and pieces, some ladders and things. This thing came packaged with uh, quite a few things, uh, weapons-wise, and I think there were a couple additions where there might be some variants into the colors of the weapons that were included, and like catapult balls and uh, weapons racks. So a lot of the stuff that you could buy separately in those other weapons packs kind of came packaged here in with the castle. And uh, finding one of these still with the box or in the box is not that easy to do, which is why this one came in at 305 bucks, incomplete, but it did have the box. And uh, some of the pieces, even the floor, I believe, on this, this toy, were it's cardboard. It's not like hard plastic, so a lot of this stuff breaks down, especially if you're relying on cardboard pieces to, uh, to build the base or, or your battle set. So 
not an easy thing to uh, last through, you know, 30, you know, 30 plus years of time, especially not knowing how they were stored. But still, number one, $305. Not too bad for a Crystar, the Crystal Warrior. Again, it's an interesting oddball little toy line, uh, but one that, uh, yeah, still has some fans. Uh, there's a lot of people who remember it, like me. And uh, again, with the Marvel comic series, that's uh, something that, uh, you know, kind of brought it back to the fore, not maybe not the forefront, but if you had looked at the Marvel Secret Wars uh, storyline from a few years back, uh, Weird World actually had a whole Crystar world, I believe, in that miniseries, uh, where some of the Crystar characters kind of were re-back introduced into Weird World. So, you know, Marvel still owns the rights to it, I suppose, since they used it, and uh, who knows where we'll ever see them again, but... Uh, yeah, it's a tidbit of history. So if any of you all remember there and are interested in Chris Star, here's your top 10 list for you. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Like and subscribe to the Tales from the Flip Side, as well as my personal channel. And if you're interested in some honorable mention picks, I got a few other things from the line that I'm going to cover in the mid credit scene over on my uh, the video on my personal channel. So you can check that out there. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.